joined now by the Israeli ambassador to the United States, Michael Herzog. Mr. Ambassador, first, I want to offer you our condolences. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, we know that your prime minister is promising a sustained campaign. Do you have any sense of how Israel will define success? Well, Israel is at war. Uh, yesterday, we were attacked by a terror organization. Uh, they infiltrated uh, Israeli territory and killed uh, hundreds of Israelis. At least 600 were butchered yesterday including whole families, elderly uh, women, children, babies were taken out of their mothers, lapped and murdered. This is war, and we have to fight that war and win it. We have to destroy the Hamas war machine. Um, you know, in war, like in war, we have to fight it. Mm -hmm. How is it that Hamas managed to take Israeli defense forces by surprise? Did they shut down communications? Well, uh, it was a surprise attack. There was definitely an element of surprise, but I think uh, we'll have enough time to investigate that once we uh, conclude that war and victory. You said you want to destroy the Hamas war machine. Hamas is armed and funded by Iran. The Biden administration says they don't have evidence that Iran was linked to this particular attack. Does Israel have evidence they were? Well, uh, we suspect Iranian hands behind the scenes. Uh, as you know, Hamas and Iran are closely tied. Iran provides a material support, funding, uh, weapons to Hamas. Uh, they are tied in what they call the axis of resistance, of course, resistance to the existence of the state of Israel. They are part of the same coalition. So uh, as far as we are concerned, uh, this is an Iranian-led coalition, and uh, we suspect that uh, Iran is involved. Does that mean Israel will take the fight to Iran? I'm not going to say what exactly Israel is going to do, but uh, I would just say that whoever strikes Israel will strike back. Sir, this is um, just stunning to see what has happened in the past few hours. Uh, but there are questions within Israel, as you know, about how such a strong military was taken by surprise. Um, there has been a massive expansion of Israeli settlements to, in the West Bank area, and with that, a buildup of forces to protect them. Um, the former ambassador to Israel, Martin Indyk, has publicly raised the question of whether that's why the border towns over and around Gaza were left unprotected. Were they? Was that a factor? Well, I don't buy that argument. I think uh, that analogy is irrelevant to the current situation. Uh, yes, it was a surprise attack, but I don't think it has uh, much to do with the fact that uh, uh, the IDF was preoccupied in uh, the West Bank. They prepared a surprise attack. They breached the border fence. They came with paragliders and threw the sea. Uh, and as I said, uh, there will be sufficient time after the war to investigate what exactly happened. Right now, we are at war, and we have to fight that war and win it. We were attacked by a terror organization funded by Iran, mm -hmm. and that's where we are right now. But you have said that perhaps Hamas miscalculated by looking at all the domestic problems Israel has within its own politics right now. Um, Absolutely. Do you, do you think that that was actually, though, a factor when it comes to military readiness? Did it leave your forces vulnerable? They may have, um, maybe they were under the impression that given the internal debate in Israel, that Israel is weakened so that they can provoke us. Um, if they thought so, I think they're uh, definitely mistaken. Um, you have to know Israelis to understand that when Israel is under attack, Israelis close ranks and they fight together. And there's no opposition coalition right now in Israel. There's no debate. All reservists are um, volunteering. We, our embassy is flooded with phone calls from people who want to go back to Israel and fight Hamas. 
So in that sense, I think it was a gross miscalculation on their part. But did it impact readiness? Uh, because there were concerns of, you know, your reservists uh, having objections, political objections, and refusing to it serve. It did not impact, no, it did not impact uh, readiness. I think uh, Israel is strong. Uh, as I said, Israelis are closing ranks mm -hmm. right now, and we will fight back. Um, in Back in 2006, you had a soldier um, taken captive and held in Gaza. It took over five years to get him back. Um, and Israel did so in exchange for 1,000 Palestinian prisoners. At what cost is Israel prepared to get these new hostages out? I think it's premature to discuss that. Um, I, mean, I think we, we just attacked yesterday. Yeah. Uh, we understand that there are probably dozens of uh, kidnapped Israelis and others in the hands of Hamas. Uh, we'll have to deal with it uh, in due time. Uh, the whole issue of hostages is a, a very sensitive issue. I think you know it from your situation in the U.S., and we we have had experience in that in the past. It's a very complicated situation, but I think it's premature to discuss uh, any deals or prices or whatever. Right now, we are at war. Are there Americans among those hostages? I understand there are, but I don't have details. You don't know the numbers or no. ability to retain them. Um, what is it that Israel and your prime minister is asking of the American president right now? So there was a very good phone call between uh, President Biden and our prime minister yesterday. The U.S. administration uh, sounded a very strong voice of support uh, for Israel, from the nation for the terror attack and support for Israel's right to self-defense. We are in discussions with the administration about the situation and about uh, our needs. Uh, I want to take the opportunity to thank the administration for the solid support of Israel in its rise to self-defense. Mm -hmm. And before I let you go, how is Israel going to allow some of those Palestinian civilians who are trapped within Gaza to uh, escape so that they aren't victims of these strikes? Well, the fact of the matter is that Hamas uses civilians as human shields. Yes. Uh, unlike Israel, we use our weapons to defend our population. They use the population uh, to hide their weapons behind them. So uh, it's a very unfortunate situation. We cannot allow terrorist impunity just because they hide uh, behind civilian population, we uh, give the civilian population due notice and mm -hmm. warnings before we strike, strike any military target, and we'll continue to do so. And to okay. the extent that uh, the population of Gaza is suffering, I think the address for, for this question is Hamas. Ambassador, thank you for your time and our condolences once again. Thank you very much, Margaret.